Flight of Iron is really Fantasy Flight's dream to make a really standout World War II tactical game for the ages. It's a, it's a tall order, but we really hope we've, we've nailed something here. Um, it takes place after the invasion of Normandy, so it's taking place in the European theater, um, mid to late war. Um, one side playing the German forces, the other side playing the American forces. The scale of the game uh, mostly revolves around squad level combat. Uh, squads are comprised of a, a rather innovative uh, technique of forming your squads. So when you open up your, your game, you're going to find a large quantity of squad bases. It's a flat plastic device with four holes in it. And all the infantry units are not going to have stands that they stand on, but they independently have small pegs. And these pegs are pressed into these squad bases. So the innovative mechanic is you can customize your, your squad bases however you want based on how many squad uh, slots are actually available. So as you move your units, you can just grab one guy and you'll move the whole squad, all four guys at one time. So it makes for a nice, easy way to move a lot, large amount of units on the board. But when a unit is injured or killed, when a, when a squad is hurt, you simply plop a unit off the squad base to indicate that the squad has taken casualty. At the start of the battle, each side gets a certain number of troops in different types as well as vehicles, and it's up to them to distribute them however they want to build their squads, if they want to build their machine gun crews with their mortar crews together, or if they want to stick their leaders with their elites. And so um, customizing their squads is a big deal in the game. In addition, this little squad base has a hook uh, that allows us to to provide specialties for these squads and give them a, an identifier. Like let's say a squad has a bazooka capability, anti-tank capability. We have a little anti-tank counter that fits snugly and beautifully into this hook. So the squad base really is an innovation that we think people are gonna enjoy. The, the game really revolves around the scenario. Every scenario has very specific setup uh, and different victory conditions, which really affects the overall strategy on, on how you're gonna win the game. Any given scenario says that the Americans, in this scenario, they're trying to defend the city. Or in this scenario, the Germans are trying to break through the American line. And so it's all about um, management of your resources, which are your different unit types, in order to fulfill these objectives, in order to um, defeat the opposing team. Another key feature of Tide of Iron is what we consider a really great system, and we call it the command system. Uh, the command system is the principle uh, where in any given scenario, there's going to be a series of command objectives on the board. By capturing these command objectives, you collect a certain amount of command points for holding these tactical objectives. And by collecting this resource, you can purchase these cards that can be used to call in aerial bombings or um, artillery or even reinforcements. But there isn't just one deck per side or one deck in total. There's a number of smaller decks that are divided into specific genres and flavors, such as artillery support air support, reinforcements, command, morale, etc. And that allows the designers of the scenario to pick and choose which of these decks would be relevant for that given historical context. The really neat thing about command cards is it's one more way to customize and add more flavor to each scenario because it will give you many different variety of decisions and choices of not only how to capture these command points but also how to spend the points and which deck you want to focus on. Inside of our main game, we'll provide you with 12 individual boards that are, that are printed on both sides. Uh, they'll be able to put, be put together in a really incredible variety of ways. Uh, each board specializes in different terrain. For example, some of them focus more on town building uh, terrain. Some of them uh, are very heavy in forests. Of course, some of them will have roads and rivers and stuff going through them. And when you match those two up, and if the river sort of drops off on one board from the other, we'll provide you with a a very large amount of board overlays that will allow you to sort of customize the boards further, such as additional roads and forest hexes and then riverbeds, as well as all the fortification effects like pillboxes and barbed wire or minefields. If there's not a certain board that has a building where a player wants it, they can put a building tile there or a hill or a forest. There's, there's really an endless possibility of different board configurations that can be made. The actual gameplay of Tide of Iron is a mixture of simulationist detail, but done in a way that's simple, in a way that's effective, and in a way that's going to be a relatively fast game. Typically a scenario will allow you to have three actions per side, and the actions are a diverse bunch. One action commonly used is the advance action. An advance action allows your soldier, or your squad, or your vehicle to simply move its full movement potential on the board. 
Another action is a concentrated fire action. This is the prime mode of actually firing at the enemy units. What's interesting about that action is that not only can your unit that you activated fire at its maximum firepower, but you're allowed to engage other friendly units that are not fatigued in a combined fire attack. A third action is an action that mixes the first two and it's called fire and movement. In this particular case, you're moving and you're firing, but you're going to be penalized in both of those in the sense that you can't move nearly as far as you would if you take an advanced action and you can't fire with as great accuracy and as great strength as you could if you took a concentrated fire action. A common action that a player would want to take is to place a unit in op fire mode, also called opportunity fire mode. This is done by simply placing a token with the op fire symbol face up next to the unit and the action is done. This unit can now fire at enemy units when they move into range and line of sight. A rare action but one that could be highly effective is an action called the assault. The assault represents a unit that is seeking to engage in close combat to force another enemy unit out of a certain area. It could be a, a hex, a forest hex, a building, a pillbox, etc. One action that does not involve the units on the board, but more of the strategic level, is activate a strategy card. Now strategy cards provide with a lot of interesting options such as off-board artillery support, air support, reinforcements, morale boost for units, etc always dependent on the strategy decks that the specific scenario has given your nation. Other actions are special actions. These actions are used when certain strategy cards allow you to, or when certain specialty units, such as the anti-tank unit or an engineer unit, allow you to utilize them. For example, an engineer unit can take a special action to remove a minefield in its current hex or a razor wire. So we're really hoping to, to support Tidevon quite extensively in the future. We'd like to try to put out several expansions for the game that really allows the tools you get inside the main big box to be used in a variety of different ways. We're planning to put out a Africa expansion that will introduce the British. We would like to put out an expansion that gives players a chance to experience the Eastern Front, the Russians and the Germans. Ultimately in the future, we'd like to put out a Pacific expansion that would introduce the Japanese uh, and rules and card decks that really relates to how it was to do the island hopping fighting that took place. This game we've been working on for a long time. We really wanted the game to be just right before it came out. Throughout the next six weeks or so, what we're going to do is we're going to be providing you with, with insights into the rules of the game. We're going to show you the units. We'll finally put the rules up online probably a week or so before the game ships, so everybody will have a chance to look at it and really make sure that this is what they want to buy. And we are very confident that they will.